Hey there, YouTubers. Kid and Hoarder here, and you're watching Session Report, the show that takes you to the gamer's table to share in the surprises that come out during play. And today we are going to be playing uh, Mistfall, Heart of the Mists. So, um, if you remember from my previous Mistfall video, um, Mistfall is a really cool sort of an RPG in a board game, actually RPG in a card game style of game. And there's a lot of games out there that try to be like an RPG, um, but in board game form. You know, without all of the rules and without the need for a game master, um, but capturing the essence of a role-playing game. And all of them fail. And Mistfall uh, fails a little bit, but it fails less than most of them. I think actually since I've recorded that video, um, Gloomhaven has come out, and of course Gloomhaven is probably the best um, game I've ever encountered to sort of capture that role-playing game feeling. But um, Mistfall up until then was the best. So I'm very excited to get back into Mistfall. Um, and uh, I'm recording this video for a couple of reasons. One of them is that if you recall my last Mistfall video, it was two characters. Um, and I think I even mentioned then that a lot of people will tell you that Mistfall doesn't work with one character. You've got to pick at least two characters. Otherwise, you're not going to have any success, and you're going to miss out on a lot of the game. I think that is complete BS. I think Mistfall works great with just one character. And in fact, I think that any character can be played solitaire, and you'll have a good time. Um, and uh, this is an attempt to sort of... Uh, demonstrate that. And in fact, um, to, to that end, I've chosen possibly the character that you would think would be the worst solo, and that is Aseki the Namekeeper, who is a bard. Yeah, imagine a solo bard. Doesn't really make sense, does it? But we're going to try it out, and I think we might have a lot of fun. The other reason I had for recording this video is to talk about um, and show some of the changes that occurred with Heart of the Mists over uh, Vanilla Mistfall. So this is a standalone expansion. It's got all new characters, all new enemies, all new encounters, all new locations, all new scenarios, and special enemy bosses, and rewards, and everything you need to play the game. Um, so that's not really an issue. But it's a standalone expansion that also makes some rather drastic changes to the base game. Aside from uh, releasing a new rulebook, which is a lot clearer than the original, um, there are some really interesting changes in this expansion, and I wanted to talk about those for a minute before we get started. So the first big change, and this is going to be one that you're going to see a lot of with Aseki the Namekeeper, is allies. So uh, Heart of the Mists introduces new allies, and I believe the Sand and Snow expansion also has some allies in them. Uh, so the allies are characters that fight alongside you, and they're not full-fledged characters. They basically act as enemies act, um, and each of them has an ally action, and then they have stats, you know, like an enemy would. And, but what's cool about these allies is two things. Um, one, their ally action is a once per turn ability that you can use in addition to your normal regular action plus any number of reflex and uh, fast actions, you get an ally action. And these basically mimic the abilities of the characters in the, uh, in the base game and in Heart of the Mist, the full-fledged characters. So for instance, we have Adrian, the uh, cleric, and he can attack an enemy for two damage. Um, or uh, he actually has an ability to give healing to a party member. We also have um, a weaponsmith who mimics the weaponsmith character here. We have um, this character who can scout. Um, a lot of them just attack enemies, but then they have some other abilities. Like this is the shield character, the shield bearer, and she can actually... Um, absorb the attacks of, uh, that are dealt toward other allies, and plus she has a pretty cool attack here. Um, so, uh, in Heart of the Mists, you can choose one ally per hero if you want, or you don't have to play with allies. They do make it a little easier. 
And then at the start of the game, you will move the time track up one for every ally you have. So uh, Aseki's ability actually is that she can begin with two allies and she can use up to two ally actions and she can flip an ally card for much cheaper than normal. Now most of these allies, they have a regular ability and then they have an ability that causes them to flip and in order to flip them back, you have to spend resolve points that you could be using on yourself. So that's no good. Um, but she can flip these allies by just discarding a card. So that's pretty... Actually, is that a male or a female character? Hold on a second here. That is the problem with this game. She. She is a woman. Okay. Yeah, some of the art on this game is very ambiguous. Ambiguously gendered. Uh, anyway, so uh, that is allies. And now I've chosen two allies because I want to... Um, I'm new to this character and I don't want to stress myself too hard. I've chosen two very straightforward, just fighting allies. Um, this one can attack an enemy and do some extra damage. Um, and then this character can attack an enemy with magic and then put fire tokens out. So very cool there. Um, so I'm going to put these other allies away. I just want to show the variety of allies available in the game. So there are two other major changes and then one that I would like to mention, uh, and you'll see why when I do it. So one of the other major changes is how the time system works. Now before, in regular Mistfall, you had this time track and you had a reinforcement track. Um, and mainly time happened, passing of time happened by flipping cards. And the cards had some other negative abilities as well. And that sort of made the game feel a little bit weird because a lot of the cards that moved the time track forward a lot, it was just completely random whether you got them. And it wasn't even that they had a nice ability that balanced it out. They had a really mean ability and pushed the time track up a lot. So that was really bad. Um, in this one, time happens actually in response to the player's actions, which is way cooler. Um, so here we have a time charter. Now every time the uh, enemy focus track passes a one of these icons, I have to remove a token from the time charter. And when I've removed all four tokens from the time charter, I'm going to move this up and put them back. Now that's really cool because... Um, that tells me how much time passes at the end of every round during the time phase. So it starts out just one, and then once I push it here, it's going to be two every round, and then if it gets really high, I'm very screwed. So that really um, makes it so you are less likely to push those abilities that push up the time track, and that's a big major change. Um, and I will explain that more in a second. Also, the reinforcement track changed a little bit, so it's a little bit more harsh. And plus, there's more icons on here that push the time track up just from reinforcement. Um, and there's also some icons on the time track that push the reinforcements up, so that can do like a feedback loop, which is sort of uh, pretty rough. Um, but the reason this is such a big, awesome change is because in the original Mistfall, there is a tendency to try to complete every encounter in one turn. And it didn't matter how much you pushed up your enemy focus. Because number one, uh, your any reinforcements that you get are just going to go away if you've completed the encounter. So there's no harm to pushing this up. Number two, the enraged enemies, if you can kill an enemy before you have to enrage it, it's not a problem for you. So with those two things together, the enemy focus, which was a really interesting part of the game, was almost meaningless because you just push it up as much as you want if you can end the encounter in one turn. It only has repercussions if you don't end up ending the encounter. And here there's a lot more between the time charter and the harsher reinforcement track. There's a lot more that makes you think twice about pushing up your enemy focus. So I think this is a major positive change. Allies are also a good change, but as I will explain in a second, uh, probably maybe not in a second, but you'll probably see in the gameplay they are not that uh, balanced, I guess. They're very, they make the game a little easy. Allies also, um, I didn't mention this, but they can actually block attacks. So in the defense phase, you can assign one enemy to each ally 
and that enemy will attack the ally instead of you. Now you have to make sure that the ally won't be killed by this attack, but if um, the ally survives the encounter, they get healing at the end of the encounter just like you normally do. Um, in fact, every time you rest, you can heal up some of your allies as well. They don't get extra restoration points, but they get that base restoration. Um, so allies are good meat shields. They basically can prevent you from taking damage a lot of the time, and that's pretty cool too. And they make the game a little easier that way. So then we have a third major change, and that is the new reward system. So the new reward system is, um, there's basically two things. One is that there's this display of reward cards, and it gets bigger the more players you have. Um, and so when you get rewards at the end of Encounter, instead of drawing two off the top of the deck, um, you get to look at what's available, and you also draw an, another card off the top of the deck, and you can take any of those. And if you don't want to take any, you can put the card under the deck and get a resolve. The other major change is that the special um, character-specific reward gear is not shuffled into this deck. It's kept with the character, and you can get that any time you want by paying to resolve and not taking a reward. So basically, instead of you discard a reward, instead of getting a resolve, you pay to resolve, and you can get one of your special things. So I think that makes it a little more expensive than it was in Mistfall, if I'm remembering right. But um, it's very cool um, to be able to get them whenever you want, and there's no restrictions that you can only get one of them. So you can get both your special reward gears in the game, and that's very cool. The other big change in the reward deck is the type of items that are coming out. So in the original Mistfall, all of the rewards were transient rewards, which means that once used, they are discarded back into the deck. Almost all of the rewards, in fact, I think all of the rewards that come in um, Heart of the Mists are reusable. They are equipment. They're new weapons and armor. So you can see there's an arcane longblade, a uh, cuirass, um, a hunting bow. Um, got a fragile blade, a versatile blade. There's staves and axes and a spyglass, a shield wand, daggers, a uh, smoldering spear, all sorts of fun stuff in this deck. And that really take, makes use of the gear proficiencies that were basically meaningless in the first game, um, because there was almost no way to get new gear um, during the game that didn't belong in your character's deck anyway. But now, for instance, I know I can get a, I can equip cloaks and daggers, so and swords. So if I get any cloaks, daggers, or swords out of this deck, I can actually get those and be able to use new items that my character wouldn't have normally had access to, um, just from their regular gear and their reward gear. So that is a really cool change to the game, and I really think it helps sort of. Um, change the variety that you get with heroes. In fact, in addition to the allies, the allies do that as well, I think. So in, now instead of just having the same heroes play the same way every time, you can experiment with putting new gear in them, partnering them up with new allies. Um, I think there's more versatility here. And the, the last thing I wanted to mention, it's not a major change, but um, I wanted to mention it because it was something that I made an error with in my original video. Um, so it has to do with what happens when you enrage enemies. So let's look at a few undead enemies as an example here. Uh, if you pass over one of these raging enemy symbols, either on your hero charter or on the, uh, the quest charter, uh, you have to enrage an enemy in your hero area. Now. What I got wrong in the original video was that in original Mistfall, you only enrage enemies that have this raging enemy symbol on them. And these ones, even though they've got an enrage ability, they only get enraged um, by special effects. Now that's not true in Heart of the Mists. In Heart of the Mists, um, you, when you go over the raging enemy symbol, it's true you need to enrage a raging enemy first, 
but after you have after all of those are enraged and if you pass over it again then you would enrage the regular enemies as well so that's actually a change which i think is a positive change because that rule was tough to remember anyway and a little counterintuitive um but uh, i did want to mention that since i had made that error in the original video um I wanted to make sure people knew about the rule and weren't confused about why I was still doing it in this video. It's because there's actually been a rule change. Okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about before I actually start the video is how you deal with shuffling tiles. It is annoying to me. I really hate shuffling tiles. Um, and so I came up with a pretty good system. It's a little time consuming but I think it works pretty well. I think it's partially because I have pretty small hands too. Um, I can shuffle small decks of cards okay, but anything with tiles, I don't know. Um, so I came up with a pretty good system I wanted to show it to you. So I need to shuffle some tiles to put out in the basically the map area. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll a die. And every time I roll the die, there's a one, I will put that tile counting down from the top. So if I rolled a six, I would go one, two, three, four, five, and put the sixth one down. And then I'd shove these others in the bottom and do the same thing again, and so on, until I put out all of the tiles that I need to. So that is a cool system for sort of shuffling tiles um, if you don't want to go through the time expenditure to do like a big mess of tiles on your table and mix them all up with your hands that kind of thing all right so we are about ready to get started now let's um, begin our exciting game of Mistfall Heart of the Mists